Consider supporting Dan and the Firemen on Patreon for just $1 a month. More information in the link below. What is up, everybody? Dan and the Firemen here. I just had to get some gas real quick, but I had a great response to last week's video, which was the common mistakes that beginners make, and it, 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 it's not good stuff. And a lot of you guys had really good comments. I put in one of the cards saying, write in the comment section, tell me what your biggest mistake or what you think I should add. And that's what this video is. It's going to be the commenter edition. These are all comments. These are all things that were brought up in the comment section below that you guys could go ahead and add more. Maybe I can make another video, but I'm going to be giving you guys those tips and those mistakes that they, other people have made and kind of my ideal on it and just my own opinion on it. So uh, I'm going to be stopping every once in a while to read the comment because I can't read the comment. I can only read bullet points. As you can tell, I have bullet points right here and I got the comments below and those will be popping up uh, during, the, during the tips. So first one, since we are stopped, I'm going to go ahead and tell you what it is. So the first one is stopping on paint. Now, this came from Tim Anderson. Anderson, I think that's how you say it with the H. Uh, I'm in the process of getting my motorcycle license, and I can tell you that the two biggest mistakes I made is stopping on white lines while wet and breaking in corners. So both these things almost made me crash. But anyways, great video, Dan. Keep it up. Smiley face with, with, with the D, so it's like a big old smiley face. Yes, so stopping on paint. I think that's the biggest one right there and breaking in corners. I've already talked about breaking in corners before. Stopping on paint, what he means by that, we're gonna come up to this intersection right here and I'll just see if I can find it. So the, let's say you're going to an intersection. Oh, it's a red light. Now fresh paint, especially after it's rained. See the white stripe, the white line, and then you have the yellow line over here. If you get too far onto that line and then you hit the rear brake or any brake really while it's wet, it is slippery, extremely slippery. This line right here, this white line, if I went to just uh, stop on it, like if I had to do an emergency braking and it was like raining or a little bit wet or even fresh paint, uh, yeah, you can easily slip and you can easily fall. You can easily crash. Um, it's A lot of it is like kind of like these tile roofs. You can't see it because it's on widescreen uh, or wide, ultra wide mode is that uh, for firefighters, just standing on a tile roof, not even wet, it's very slippery. So always having good traction, um, especially when something's wet is very important. So uh, yeah, do not stop and break or try to even avoid on a turn uh, the paint lines. Uh, tar snakes, you can also do that because sometimes like, especially in the heat, summer heat, they get really mushy and like grippy. Uh, so when you're turning, they might grip your tires or if you're trying to stop, they might uh, squish underneath your tire and cause you to lose traction. So definitely avoid obstacles in the road. All right, in the dirt. So the next one, Passing semi trucks, basically. So we got actually two comments here. We got Mike Essery. Uh, when you pass a semi, no NASCAR passing. Come out in the left lane much sooner so the driver has a better chance to see you. People NASCAR pass trucks all all day long. What he means by NASCAR uh, passing is is you're getting that drift, and then as soon as you get like enough speed and, and enough of that, you just go out really quick around them. So just don't like get on their tail and then go around. And then it says people. Oh, and then we got. Uh, Heavy metal. Heavy, eh, there you go. It's like heavy metal. People always forget to how how blind semi trucks are. Also, when you are passing a semi, don't sit there moseying past at one mile an hour. Move your ass past quickly, especially on the offside. Um, the super trucker will get oh, butter over this, and all the others will thank you for not sitting there, forcing them to make a judgment call whether you are behind the trailer end or not, if they have to and want to change lanes. So passing semi trucks like an asshole, basically. Uh, is very dangerous and then also let's go ahead and get back on here and then also just uh just like staying on the side of a semi truck without passing i mean like you're barely going like one mile over them over what they're going and you're just barely just just creeping along it's like they might have to switch lanes they are taking up the whole lane it's like man if something's in my in my way i can't move because somebody is just sitting here um, and you're on a bike, so like just even a tap from a semi truck will definitely cause you damage. <laughs> it will kill you, most likely. And then, uh, make sure no one's there. And then you definitely don't want to like get up like right on the, the trailer end and then go, and then just like, whoop, I'm passing you, and then go. Because for that split second, they're like, okay, I'm gonna switch lanes to you because of something up here, and they start switching lanes, they check their mirror, and then they look around, they, and then they went to go switch lanes, but you switch lanes so quick that they did check their mirrors, but you weren't there in that split second because you decided to go switching really quick. So don't do that. Don't be an ass like that. 
and uh, make sure you pass uh, semi truck drivers with a little more respect. And uh, I actually have a Discord member, uh, Wayward, Wayward Rebel Ace. <laughs> Keep messing that up. I believe that's right. Um, he's a he's a truck driver and motorcyclist, and he's giving me some great tips. So we're actually going to have uh, a tip video when it comes to semis pretty soon. Pretty soon, hopefully soon. We'll see how it goes. Okay, we're at a red light. I think I could do this one. If not, I'm gonna have to pull over. All right. All right. So, Mr. Smile. Oh, it's so bouncy. Mr. Smiley says, not knowing the limitations of your bike i.e. leaning too far, seeing people try to lean further than their bike is designed to and dig their peg or board into the asphalt. Um, and I'm going to paraphrase it because I've already read this. It basically says uh, you can hit a pothole and there it goes. Uh, there, there you go. Okay, hopefully I got that right. I have to, have to, fo I have to, focus, on <laughs> I have to focus on riding. So leaning too far and not knowing the limits of your bike is a very big no no it's a very big mistake and i have seen people crash on that if you, if you look at the dragon it's like this like 300 turns in 11 miles in california you just i saw the pictures just today i'm gonna stop right here so we can read more if we have to um i just saw pictures today of these big old cruise bikes just eating it because they're like scraping their 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 saddle bags they're scraping their pegs and floorboards and there's nothing wrong with scraping your pegs my new pegs are Oh, see that this is another one. Don't put your feet on the paint. My foot almost slipped. So don't put your feet on the crosswalk paint. But uh, my first when I first got this bike, I got the regular pegs. It was the regular pegs that came factory and they had those like uh, the, the those metal pieces on the end. I scraped the crap out of those. I scraped those down. I scraped uh, these Burley brand uh, MX pegs. It, it I still scrape them, but I don't like push it so hard that that I'm like running on like the smallest sliver of tire. That's another thing is that you can go so far that you just lose traction of your tire. Um, if you have exhaust on the right side as a Harley, you know, a Harley owner, uh, and it's like super low, you can actually hit that exhaust and then knock your rear tire from the ground, lose all traction, and crash. My buddy Matt actually did that uh, a couple of years ago. Everything was perfectly fine, not hurt, not none of, none of that stuff, but still, it sucks. Um, so definitely uh, watch your, 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 like, know your bike's limits when it comes to turning. It, you should only be scraping those pegs if, if you're like going to the track. You should only be really going and pushing your bike to the limit if you're going someplace safe on a track or something like that. Uh, but definitely don't want to be doing that in town because you never know. These, these roads are not level. So you, you could be scraping peg for one section and then all of a sudden there's like this big divot and you hit your floorboard or your peg on that divot and boom, you just knocked your bike out of balance and you, uh, you crash. So yeah, just you know, take your time. Go to the right speed on the turn, so you're not having to scrape pegs just to make the turn. You know what I mean? You know, guys, this is a lot of fun. I, I really do appreciate your comments. So I'm I'm, I'm actually enjoying <laughs> this tip video a lot more than having to sit there and do some do some research and, and familiarize myself with stuff. And it's great to hear from you guys. It's really good for me hearing from you guys. All right, so let's go ahead and park right here. Let's be a little bit safe. All right, the Cockney biker. I noticed that new riders tend to coast, holding the clutch while going around bends or coming to a stop when they got a mile to go. It means that if they, it means that if when they do let go of the clutch, it invariably is in the wrong gear, causing the bike to spin out or jerk violently or the engine to lag. Pretty dangerous if you need to accelerate out of an impending collision or something. Yes, I remember doing that quite a bit in my truck. Now I, I mentioned uh, learning the clutch control. Oh, well, the title of this one will be Holding the Clutch In on Turns, okay? Or Better Clutch Control, something like that. I learned this while riding my, or driving my truck. That's where I learned uh, clutch control. That's where I learned uh, how to feather the clutch, how to, you know, feather the throttle and the gas pedal and all that stuff, only well, because it's a truck, um, on the truck. And, but before I actually learned how to do it, I was always stalling. I was always like jumping the clutch. It was, it was crazy because I just didn't, I didn't know the right way to do it. Now, if you're just starting on a bike and you don't have uh, a stick, to, you know, or a manual transmission, truck or car to practice on, it's it's kind of dangerous because you can fall. And if you're going to be doing that on a turn, like let's say I, well, I don't want to do it right here because that's a little bit dangerous. Let's go. Let's say I was doing, I was going on a normal turn up here. Gosh, this road sucks. And uh, I just held the clutch in. And I was like moving through the gears and stuff and just still holding it in. Not really, you know, going from one gear to the next with the throttle, you know, letting go of the clutch and all that stuff. All of a sudden someone pulls out in front of me and for some reason I'm like in fourth gear instead of second gear. 
and I try to hit the throttle and I either stall the bike or I just have zero power. It's like boo, 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 it's just like bogged it down so much and then I get hit because I wasn't in the appropriate gear. So having good sense of uh, what gear you're in, newer bikes have a gear indicator. Uh, my bike doesn't have that, but just throughout the years of riding, I kind of know where it is. Uh, I, I feel it, I, I just, I sense it. And right there, if I just held the clutch in, I wouldn't have been able to do that. I just went through the gears slowly. So having the appropriate gear and being familiar with the bike when it comes to gears and the clutch, and not holding it in on turns is super important and to, to be safe because you really have to be at all times on the bike ready for uh, anything. Ready for absolutely anything. Let's go ahead, let's go ahead and pull over here. I'm gonna go check my PO box. Hey guys, uh, yeah, I have a PO box. If you wanna send me anything, let me know. I got a link, I got the, not a link, but uh, the PO box in the description. Just talk about the next few and i don't want to ride because i think it's just taking too long to stop and ride stop and ride so let's go ahead and turn this up let's do that okay so we'll just we'll just talk about this next one i'm gonna mispronounce your name i'm so sorry dude you've been commenting a lot i love seeing your comments you're always there uh h-u-y-k-e-d hui kid hui kid i messed it up anyways Here's a very stupid, idiotic thing I did one time that I got really lucky on, but don't. Do not ride when you're tired. I had one hour of sleep the previous day and decided to go up from San Diego to LA. Then I left LA at around 1 a.m. I spent about six of my nine lives riding home that night early morning. I don't know how I managed to stay balanced and not crash. Well, I understand the physics of it. Spiel's winning, you know, the whole gyroscope thing. I should have just rented a motel for $125. Well, you know how that goes, trying to save money, but that's just a fool's economy. If I had crashed, my medical bill would have been astronomical. $125 would have been a chump change I would have gladly spent, especially considering the pain or death. Yes, that is very big, so do not ride sleep-deprived. Um, and I'm just going to keep it at sleep-deprived. Sleep deprived. I'm not going to talk about drunk driving because I already talked about that in the last beginner mistake. Sleep deprivation is huge, uh, especially on a bike, because for me personally, the wind noise, the engine rumble, just the, the vibration is very calming to me. So if I'm already tired, I'm going to fall asleep. So it's really nice to, uh, to just get a hotel room, recharge, relax. Even if you're just going to sleep there for a couple hours and leave, you're not using the full experience and you're not going to get the continental breakfast and all that stuff, whatever it is, just leave when you want, leave when you can. But, um, it's, it's huge to get the appropriate amount of sleep, guys. It's, it's very important. Now, I just want to let you guys know that this could not have happened without my patrons. Now, I'm going to read off their names because the patron list is getting so big, but I keep seeing the same names popping up. This is my senior crew. This is the $20 a month senior crew. I appreciate you guys so much. We got key change. We got a bunch of other stuff coming out. We got challenge coins coming out. We get, you guys are paying for all the stickers, basically, and I'm able to give them to other people and hand them out and, and spread the word. And you guys are doing great in the Discord chat. I love have, seeing you guys in the Discord chat. You get your special thing. But anyways, anyways, this couldn't have happened without Twin Leaf, Emmett, Anthony, Christopher, Fox, Dewey did it, Robert, and Connor Mercer. Connor, dude, Connor, you've been, you've been amazing since the beginning. So thank you so much, guys. I truly appreciate it. And I want you guys to ride safe. And if there's anything else you want to write or comment below and let me know so we can do another one of these, that'd be freaking awesome. I loved it. Um, just let me know. Write in the comments. Just tell me what you think. With that said, I hope you guys ride safe, be safe, and I'll see you guys later.